Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. Wow, I haven't made so few videos in this huge a span of days in I don't know how long. And not that it's huge, but I try to post something almost every day. And this, this has been a busy stretch for me, but I'm settled back into my little workshop here in Durham and I wanted to catch up. It takes a while to catch up when you've been gone for a few days. I did add one of the little bottles. You know, I took some bottles and put some seeds in from the poke berry plant and then just tied it with a couple of different things. One is this beautiful ribbon and the other is just some hemp cord. And I pinned that on with a safety pin. Because of my traveling, I haven't been able to really get in a place each day where I could dive deeper and deeper into research about Morgan Le Fay, but I have continued to read. There is another sheet of cutouts available on my website. This sheet probably doesn't have as much information as far as quotations and things, but I have continued to be surprised over just how many different versions of Morgan are out there and how many artists she inspired. There are some beautiful, beautiful images on here. We have some illustrations by Dora Curtis, and then we have King Arthur and the Weeping Queens. This is Dante Gabriel Rossetti. And then we have Morgana Le Fay by Howard Pyle, uh, I remember Howard Pyle's work from when we were homeschooling some of the children. And then we have Mrs. Le Fay, and this is from Mark Twain's A Yankee in King Arthur's Court. This illustration is by Dan Beard, and that work by Mark Twain, of course, was more satirical, but I still thought this illustration was, was very cool. Uh, I believe these are pigs in the background, but they just fade in. It, it's, it's a fun illustration. And again, these stories inspired so many things. You know, Mark Twain was very dry with his humor, and he was uh, pretty cynical about a lot of things, especially certain hierarchies pertaining to things like royal families and government and such. Anyway, this is available on my website, and there's a link to that. What have I done? I added this piece of fabric to the front. Uh, I still might add more, but you know I love layers. We have the bottle here that's new. I put some alcohol ink spots, and I just love things like that. Have I added anything else here? Oh, I did. I found this tiny little owl charm in the thrift store, so I just pinned that inside the front cover. I know that I want to have lace or ribbon or some sort of trim on every page, so I've added those things. I've started adding my regular Halloween ephemera and paper and things that I've purchased over the last couple of weeks or so. So it's, I think it just adds to it. This is a Halloween journal. This is October Daily. And even though mine is centered around Morgan Le Fay, I think it's fun to have these things in here. Like uh, the wooden, I had some stickers that are made from wood. I think they came from the Dollar Tree. So I glued these in. They had the sticker dots on the back, but they just were not holding. So what I do in that case, I glue them down and then sometimes we'll just clip something over it to hold it into place while I keep working. We've seen that trim. I think I added this orange trim and let's just keep going. There's the feather that I found by the water at Camden. I did find something interesting. Um, I didn't really want to take the picture of Jane Austen out because I like to be inspired by just whatever happens to be in a place or on the ground or in a thrift store or in a journal. And I started reading about Jane Austen, of course, who lived in England. And it turns out that she was taken to Winchester for medical care when her health declined. And Winchester is where Arthur's round table is said to be. I thought that was kind of cool. And I feel like she would have been acquainted with all of the old British stories and, you know, folklore. The places around her, Wales, uh, Scotland, Ireland. I think we've seen all of this, unless, you know, there's maybe a little distressing and things like that that I've added. I will probably come back and put more in here. 
and it was fun to have that big children's book with me while I traveled. I did read most of that, and I, I didn't know all of the story, so even in a simplified children's version, I did learn a lot. <laughs> Sometimes I learn more that way than any other way. I think, yes, I added this when I got back to my workshop. And this is just some washi tape that I had in my Halloween things. I think that was sent in some happy mail, so thank you so much for that. Put a little bit more on that side, and that was the end of, of that, so I was glad to use that in this journal. I found a bunch of flowers at the Dollar Tree, and they were all these purple leaves, so I guess they're not. Are they flowers? Let me look. Yes, this spray or sprig or whatever you want to call it of leaves, and I love the color, so I'm going to incorporate those through the journal. I went ahead and sewed one here on my little version of Morgan. And again, I'm using up stickers and things that are Halloween related. I added one of the wooden stickers here. And then in this pocket, we have one of the images. I wish the Dollar Tree would have these again. There was one year that they had the huge, like 16 by 20 inch pictures that you can put out and they're they're kind of sturdy but they change under the light and when you move them back and forth. I had several of those but if I see them again I'm going to buy more. They're they're really a lot of fun and I added this piece of fabric that looks like a piece of paper that just ended up there by accident and I left it. And let's see October 9th I think I added this trim. I'm leaving this like it is for now. I may come back and do more um, if inspiration strikes. And then on this page, of course, there is the beautiful illustration from Howard Pyle's book. And there's just a stamp there that I thought tied in really nicely. This is a page that I had practiced, not practiced, but cleaned my letter stamps off a little bit. And I decided just to distress it and use it. And I stapled that in. This is some really pretty taffeta. And you know, it can be pretty stiff. And I love the way it's unraveling. It's not too bad. It reminds me of the cheapy Halloween costumes we used to get when I was a little girl. Uh, of course, I thought I was dressed like a queen or a princess in the most fine fabrics, but they actually were really stiff fabrics. And I don't think you could wash them in the washer and put them in the dryer. Those were fun days. This page of stickers came from the Dollar Tree, and when I looked at it, I thought, you know, it would have so much more impact to put it on this page, to leave them just like they were in the package, have them all together like this. So I, I do really love the way that turned out. And I love these little round paper clips. They're so much fun. I just kind of wanted that there because I tried out the new calligraphy pen and the ink. This is a really tiny little nib as far as being sharp and just really narrow on the tip. And this ink, that was actually sealed up. It's got like wax or something around it. And then of course you pull this cork out. So, uh, and it's, it's just dreamy the way it writes compared to other things that I have had. So I do love this. It's funny how it's turning sort of a pink color. I didn't mean to get it on my finger, but you can see it even here. And that may be because I distressed the other side over here. I'm not sure, but I love the way this writes. It's very nice. I did add some trim here. This has been floating around my desk for I don't know how long. It's just a bloom from somewhere. I don't remember if it came from the yard or somewhere we were. And that, of course, is another image from the uh, page that I created for printing and using in your journals. That's one of the images by Dora Curtis, and I added some alcohol ink. I had a couple of little stickers that I thought were really pretty added to that. It gave it some color. I took one of these um, Karen Dash crayons as well and just went right around the edge and then used water to just kind of soak that into the page. I love this. This is one of the flowers that I picked the last time Jason and I were out walking on the Haw River and I've had it in a book ever since then. I have one of those um, machines that will laminate things and that goes all the way back to when the kids were in school and I used to laminate things for their school work. I put the little quote in here. This is one of the few like quotations or whatever on this page. 
Uh, this is from The Night with the Lion by Helen Lynch, and I believe it's a children's book. I have an ointment at home given me by that wise woman, Morgan Le Fay, who has many powers. She told me there was no fever in the brain it would not cure. So I just love that whole thing. Uh, this is one of the little informational uh, quotations on the very first Morgan Le Fay page that we did. I haven't put the date on here yet. So October 11th, and then this is the 12th. I've, I've gone ahead and glued in a few more things. And then I think this is where I've stopped. You can see how the distressing is starting to work its way back on, you know, future pages because I love to just go around the page. This is black, but we'll do it anyway. Um, usually I use, you know, colors, but as you distress a page like that and, you know, put some water to it, it does end up working its way down the other pages. And I like that. I think it ties things together. And I love that ripply effect on the pages. This is a piece of driftwood that I found um, on the Pasqua tank, and it was just the perfect size, so I picked that up knowing that I was going to add it to the journal, and it worked out perfectly because the back of this ended up sticking out a little bit further than the front. It's just the way I folded it and made it and put the fabric over the top. Uh, the way I do some of these journals with this design, I don't worry too much about perfection. Um, as you can tell, and I, I really love that, that concept and the way they turn out. I did add this. This is just a little uh, book plate that I found. This is from the Dollar Tree. Happy Halloween. I just stuck this in the back, and somewhere, here it is, the witch is in. So uh, these, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these yet. I could hang them up for decoration, and then, you know, Put them away when Halloween is over. I did pick up some vintage postcards while we were at the Outer Banks. We've got, um, this one is separate. That's a separate story. I need to tell you all about that, but that's gonna be a separate video. I'm still keeping it in here though, and I need to add a special note to this journal. There is a reason. These are just some vintage postcards of the Outer Banks, and I thought I would keep them in this journal while I am, since I was traveling while I was working on this one. That's everything I have for right now for the journal. I have purchased some really, really fun cards lately. Oh, where are they all? So we've got, and, and you know, playing cards, that's something that I sell a whole lot of in my shop. And I love to add really fun cards when I can. Uh, but we found, I'm not sure which ones of these I will add. Look at the beautiful illustrations on these. These are the Gypsy Oracle cards. So just really, really beautiful. I love to be able to send things like this out in my, my cards when I sell them. And look at the back, how beautiful. So those are not necessarily traditional playing cards, but I, I do think people love receiving cards like this in their, their sets of 50. And I usually throw in a few extras. And then we have the Gypsy Witch fortune telling playing cards. And these illustrations are beautiful. Really, really sort of bright, but also very vintage feeling. They have sort of that uh, wood, wood block engraving look. So I could not resist these cards, especially this time of the year. I just think they're so pretty. Aren't they pretty? Look at this side. We have the witch by the cauldron with her cat. And then these are really neat. These are based on Appalachian folklore and tradition. I think it's interesting just because of that. Uh, I really do. The man who put these together, Jake Richards, teaches this tradition in history. He's from the Appalachian Mountains in Tennessee. And, you know, I'm just a couple of hours away from 
that area uh, three or four hours, depending on how deep you want to go into the Blue Ridge Mountains. And then, of course, the Blue Ridge, that, that ridge of mountains goes up north to the Allegheny Mountains and all the way up in New York. So that's the Appalachian Mountain. And I think ours are called the Blue Ridge. It does look sort of blue up there. It's really beautiful. But these are just amazing. And I may hang on to these just because of the history here. Uh, the book tells about all the wives' tales and, you know, signs of this or that about to happen or, you know, seeing a bird here or things happening in threes. A lot of these things I've heard all of my life, just, you know, superstition. I'm not sure if I will put these in, in with my other cards. These were a little expensive. The set was almost $25, and I really was drawn to it because of this history. So, anyway... I think these cards are all really pretty. So that is, that's, that's what we're caught up now. <laughs> and I feel really out of practice as far as sitting down here and just, you know, carrying on in front of the camera. I hope everyone is doing well, doing awesome. I'm going to try to ease right back into it. I've opened the Etsy shop back up and I have so many things to put into it. It's just a matter of getting them listed. Thank you so much for being here. I will be back really soon. Bye for now.